we have learned yesterday uh, on Monday and then uh, let's look at example two so it's quite similar to example one it's a hybrid function again so for this function when x greater than zero you have x squared plus 2x plus 1 when x is smaller than zero you have 2x plus 1 and then I want to find f dash x and sketch the graph of f dash x okay I want to sketch the graph of f dash x okay first of all let's think about at the point zero what's happened okay what's happened so because zero is the connection point okay it's the connection point so i need to think about first whether this point is connected at x equals to zero so let's name let's name it let us say let f1 x equals to x squared plus 2x plus 1 x f2 x equals to 2x plus 1 i can I don't ne not necessary to name it, but I just think it's easier if I name it. So when x equals to zero, I want to see. I am interested in the connection point only. So f one zero equals to one. F two zero equals to one as well. So the graph is continuous at x equals to zero. Because the two y values is the same, okay, so the two y values are the same. So they give you the same y value when you have the same x. So the point is connected. And the next thing we'll think about is the derivative at x equals to zero for both functions. So I will say f1 dash x equals to 2x plus 2. f2 dash x equals to 2 because it's a linear. So the gradient are same everywhere. When x equals to zero, f dash one zero equals to two, f dash two zero equals to two as well. So f dash one zero equals to f dash two zero. So it is smoothly connected. smoothly connected fx is differentiable at x equals to 0 okay, it's differentiable at x equals to 0 all right now let's sketch it let's sketch it I'll sketch f dash 1 first. For f dash 1, your x needs to be greater than 0. Okay, your x needs to be greater than 0. Now, what I'm going to sketch is x and f dash x. Okay, I'll just sketch graph f x and f dash x. When x greater than 0, I will have 2x plus 2. Okay, I'll have 0, 0 because I can take the derivative at 0. Uh, not 0, 0. I will have 0, 2. 0, 2. And then I'll have 1 and 4. When sub x equals to 1, f dash x equals to 4. So on this side, it's a linear. That's when x greater than zero. When x smaller than zero, you will have f dash two x equals to two. So the gradient is two. And I can label one point here. Minus one and two to make sure it looks like a horizontal line okay this is a closed circle okay at zero two is a closed circle is uh, differentiable at x equals to zero but compare compare to the previous graph here look at the two red graph the two red graph is not connected at x equals to zero because they take different values so that should be two open circles for both function okay can't take 
any of those values. It's not differentiable at x equals to zero. So if it needs to be a you, you want to achieve a closed circle, the graph must be connected at that point. If you want to like just have separate like hybrid function not connected, then you have open circles on both graphs. Okay, so fx is differentiable at x below uh, for all the x for all x belongs to R. Okay, fx is dif differentiable for all the x belongs to R. So I can differentiate that anywhere. For the next question, I don't want, I don't need to sketch it, but I want to give you a better view, so I just sketch it out. Um, be careful with the domain. Let's have a look at where's the domain. Zero to four, it goes through this function. Okay, you have two endpoints, zero and four. So what's this graph looks like? Uh, let's say f one x equals to x squared plus two x plus one. So f one x equals to x plus 1 squared. Okay, so you have negative 1, 0 as the turning point, but negative 1 is not included in the domain. So let's find 0. You have 0, 1. And you will have 4. And so when x equals to 4, f1, 4 equals to 16 plus 8 plus 1, that's 25. So let's say it's somewhere here. It's not to scale, but the shape will look like that. So... Like that. So this point is 0, 1. This point is 4, 25. And you have the other end have negative 5 to 0. Exclude both ends. Okay, exclude both ends. So let's say when x equals to negative 5. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. Here, but it's an open circle and then you have 0 when x equals 0 is 1 okay when x equals to 0 this f2x is x plus 1 then f2 0 equals to 1 so that's an open circle overlap with that so that is continuous and you will connect it like this And then you have an uh, x intercept. That x intercept will be minus 1, comma, 0. That endpoint is negative 5, comma, negative 4. So you have graphs looks like that. It's connected. It's definitely connected. Ah, well, if you want to know whether it's connected or not, you just need to find f1, 0, which is 1 and f20 is 1 as well, then you know it's connected. I just want to give you a better view so I sketch it out. So that's how this fx looks like, okay, how this fx looks like. The next thing I was thinking about, yes, it's connected, but is that connected smoothly or not? Let's say f1 dash x, 2x plus 2, f dash 2x, 
which is 1. They connected at x equals to 0. They connected at x, x equals to 0. So 1x equals to 0. f1 dash 0 equals to 2. f2 dash 0 equals to 1. They are not equivalent. Okay, they are not equivalent. So is not differentiable at x equals to 0. Okay, the connection point can't differentiate because the value is not quite correct. Okay, is there any other point that cannot be differentiated as well? End point. Okay, what's the end points? Negative 5 and 4. Okay, there are another two points you cannot differentiate. You must remember this, okay? There will be questions like that in the V car, in your set, in your test, in anywhere. Okay, so you can't include the endpoints. So let's sketch the f dash x on the same set of x axis. Okay, I'll use the red to sketch the f dash x. One is in between zero to four. You will have two x plus two. Okay, where where is two x plus two? You will have two here, which is open circle when zero two. And then you will have uh, one equals to four. That is ten. Okay, one x equals to four. That gives you ten. But it needs to be an open circle as well. The gradient function needs to be an open circle on both ends. And it looks like the gradient looks like that. The derivative for this blue graph looks like the red one. But even though 425 is included, you can take that point, but the derivative doesn't exist. Okay, it doesn't exist. So two open circles. And then the other one gives you f2x equals to 1 equals to 1. But equals to 1, you need an open circle here. And you need open circle on this end. You connect it. That gives you negative 5 and 1. That gives you 0 and 1. But it is open circle okay it is open circle at zero one don't worry about the the blue line because it's separate graphs okay even though the blue one got a closed circle there but it's separate graph when you separate like that should be an open circle uh, maybe i just think maybe it's better for me to sketch it on separate ones uh, Well, that's a close one, and that's zero one. On the other side, I will have zero zero two. Okay. 
talk about the differentiability. So fx is differentiable for all x belongs to negative 5 open bracket to 4 open bracket exclude 0 okay, or you can describe that in the word in words okay, it's differentiable from there to there except x equals to 0 so 3 points excluded from the domain of negative 5 to 4 It is really important you know how to sketch gradient function. Okay, it's really important. about this page okay example four consider the function given by that that's three hybrid function if the function is joined smoothly find the values of a b c and d tell me what means by drawing smoothly you need two things what do you need? Drawing smoothly, continuous, and gradient the same at the same point. So, what are the two points they connected? Like, where, where, which at which two places the graph connected? Three and four. Okay, three and four. So, can you see three and three? Those two functions will connect it at x equals to 3. And those two functions will connect it at x equals to 4. So let's name the function first. And the other two connected, like the middle one is a third x minus 3 squared. And one function connect to the left and one function connect to the right. Okay, so we need to consider about two points, okay, two positions, not only one. So let's do half. Um, drawing smoothly, I'll say. Drawing smoothly at x equals to 3. The two functions you need to worry about is the first one and the second one. Nothing to do with the third one because the third one, the first one is not connected. When x equals to 3 is connect the first one and second one. So it needs to join smoothly. So number one, what I should have is f1, 3 equals to f2, 3. Number two, what I will have is f dash one three equals to f dash two three. Okay, those two things must be the same. First one gives you continuous, and second one gives you same gradient. So let's work out what's f dash f one dash x equals to two a plus b. F dash two x. Okay. How do we derive this function? How do we derive that function? Which rule we should use? Chain rule. Okay, chain rule. So the third is here. 
Okay, the constants here. Drag the power down, you times the power. You derive the inside function, x minus 3, you derive it, it's still 1. Okay, times the 1. And then you reduce the power by 1, so that becomes x minus 3. So that gives you 2 on 3x minus 2. That's f2x. And f dash 3x equals to c. Okay, that's a linear. The derivative is just a constant, which is c. Alright, so let's put values in. Let's put values in. For number 1, f13. f13 is 9a plus 3b plus 9 equals to f23. f23 is a 0. So if you divide everything by 3, you have 3a plus b equals to negative 3. That's your equation number 1. For equation number 2, f dash 1, 3. And, uh, this is 2ax, I forgot the x. f dash 1, 3 equals to 6a plus b. Okay, 6a plus b. f dash 2, 3 equals to 0 again. 2 over 3 times 3 is 2. 2 minus 2 gives you 0. So 6a plus b equals to 0. Let's use the second equation to subtract the first equation you will have 3a equals to 3, where a is 1. And b is negative 6. b equals to negative 6a, then b is negative 6. Okay, I have worked out a and b values. Okay, similarly, we have joint smoothly at x equals to 4. Okay, join smoothly at x equals to 4. So if it's joined smoothly at x equals to 4, first, which two functions join at 4? It's the second and the third functions join together at x equals to 4. Nothing to do with the first one. Okay, nothing to do with the first one. So f2, 4 needs to be the same as f3, 4. And then f dash 2, 4, 2, 4 needs to be f dash 3, 4. So you have this exactly the same thing as before. So f24 equals to a third. f34 will equals to 4c plus d. f2-4 gives you 8 over 3 minus 2 equals to f-34 which is c. Okay, it's a constant gradient. What is 2? 2 is 6 over 3. Then C equals to 2 over 3. D equals to a third minus 4C. Uh, D equals to a third minus 4 times 2 over 3. D equals to minus 7 over 3. I have worked out A, B, C, D values by using only one information joined smoothly. 
Join Smoothie will give you actually two pieces of information, connected and the gradient to be the same. And I have two point join smoothly, actually I have four pieces of information. And I can work out A, B, C, D values. Questions about this? We complete the whole chapter nine. Okay, everything's here. The most important concept will be define limited exist or continuity and differentiability. So you need to distinguish between those four concepts, and you need to know the connections uh, between the four concepts. And then the other important thing will be how to derive different types of graphs. We know. Um, polynom not polynomials, it's x to the power of n, which is power functions. We know how to derive exponentials, how to derive logarithms. We know how to derive sine, cosine, and tangent, and that's the things we need to know for year 12 methods. And then we have three tools. I can say there's three tools to help us to work further for differentiate, uh, uh, differentiate things. Uh, we have chain rules. Okay, we have two types of chain rule. The first type is gx to the power of n. The derivative will be n times g dash x times g to the power of n minus 1. Okay, that's the first one. The second one is f of gx. If you have y equals to f of gx, then dy dx will equal to g dash x bracket f dash gx. Okay, that's the second use of chain rule. Okay, so two types of chain. It's actually the same thing, but like it's two helpful formulas for you to use. So that chain rule is the first thing that help us to find derivatives. The second one is product rule, and then the third one is quotient rule. So we use product rule, chain rule, quotient rule to combine with all the differentiate rules together to work out all types of um, derivatives for every function. Okay, so you should be able to find the derivative for every function in methods now. Okay, so that's overview of what we have learned so far in chapter 9. Okay, it's the whole chapter 9. So three big parts, limits defined, continuous, and differentiability is one part. All the rules we're trying to derive things is one part, and then the third part will be chain rule, quotient rule, and product rule. Okay, so three different things we learned in this chapter. And in chapter 10, we will go through um, the use of that application of differentiation, how to find max, how to find the minimums, how to sketch a graph by using this knowledge. Okay, any other questions about this? Um, I will recommend you to start to do some chapter 10 stuff because chapter 10 will be exactly the same as what you have learned last year. We'll learn a little bit new things, but most of them, 90% of them are the same. And then we don't have too much time when we're coming back before you're set to go through the whole chapter 10. You'll be very panicking, okay? So I will recommend you do something first. I'll upload the notes for you by the end of Friday, and you can print the notes out and do some questions on the notes. Okay, a self-study for that. I will teach, but like it's too panicking in time. For what? Um, okay, I'll pause.